Off the Cuff is supported by Patreon. Join today and become an honorary producer and get in-show credit on every episode. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Off the Cuff. It's good to see you. Okay, actually, I, I can't see you, but let's just go with it. Today's show brings me back to when I was 17 years old. Yep. I was 17 years old on Long Island, and I worked part-time for a fast food restaurant that my friend opened. It was called The Parthenon, and it was a fast food Greek restaurant, and it was delicious. They had the most delicious, uncommon dishes. They had kibbies, which is a meat pie, spinach pies, they had baklava, they had slovaki, and they had gyros, which is not the right way to pronounce it. It's actually gyro, but we'll get into that. And the food was fantastic, the restaurant was a hit, and ever since then, I've been in love with that kind of food, which leads us to today's show. Today, I'm gonna make a low carb, homemade gyro. Oh yeah, complete with the lamb and beef meat mixture, also a homemade low carb pita with a pocket and everything, and also tzatziki sauce. This is going to be delicious. I've been waiting to do this show a long time and I think it's really gonna be great. So today, off the cuff goes Greek. I only have plastic plates. So before we actually get to the cooking, I have a surprise for you. Yeah, a very special visitor from my family. Watch. Okay, so a departure uh, for our first segment here. Now, usually this is where a couple of crazy characters or people will come in and just make my life crazy. Yeah, nothing of the sort today. Today, it's all about family. Yeah, I am really thrilled to announce that my favorite relative of all time is here, and he's making his first appearance ever on Off the Cuff. So please, welcome like I said, my favorite uncle, Uncle Gibby. Oh, is, thank you. It's yeah. so great to see you. Yeah. Um, when does the show start? It already has. It has? Yeah. Oh, we better get to the studio. This is a studio. This is a studio? Yeah, we shoot right here in my kitchen. In here? Yeah. You shoot in here? Mm hmm Oh, Bubala, if you needed money, all you had to do was ask. No, no, no. no. It's, it's nothing, nothing like that, no. When was the last time you painted? Oh, don't, don't worry about it. I asked you here for a very special reason. You want to redecorate? No, don't worry about that. I want you to guess what I'm cooking in here today. Do you mean you actually cook in here? There's nothing wrong with my kitchen. Uncle Givy, I'm making a gyro and a homemade low-carb pita. Wow, you, you make that yourself? Yeah. What do you think? Oh, well, it's very ambitious. You've become quite the cook. <laughs> Anything else? Um, Are you offering a beverage? I would love an Arnold Palmer. <sighs> Uncle Gibby, I'm making a gyro. Yeah, you said, that's right. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah. Oh, I'm making it in honor of your Greek heritage. My Greek what? Your Greek heritage. Oh, I see. Craig, I, I thought you knew. Knew what? I am not Greek. You're not Greek. I am Armenian. Armenian? Armenian. No Greek? No Greek. Not even a little Greek? Not even Jimmy the Greek. I sent away my DNA to one of those mail-away sites. Oh, yeah, I've done that too. It says that I'm 11% Greek. Papa! <laughs> yeah, but I thought I got that 11% from your side of the family. My side? Oh, Craig, surely you knew. Oh, no. It's never good when somebody says, surely you knew, because I should have knew. What should I know? We are not actually related. <laughs> of course we are. No, we are not. Uh, I, I was just very good friends with your mom and dad. And you. Well, you're, you're Uncle Givy. Yes, that's right. 
You know that thing where parents introduce family friends as uncle to their children? And, well, that's me. I'm Uncle Givy. Huh. So you're not Uncle Givy from Greece? No, I am your old friend Givy from Bayonne. Oh. Whoa. Hey, you could still call me Uncle Givy, <laughs> even though I'm not that much older than you. You know, I think these DNA results were wrong anyway. Really? Yeah, because, look, my dad was all German, my mom was Irish. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, but this says I'm 46% Italian, no German at all. Wow, that is strange. Yeah. No, come to think about it. No. There were no Italians in our neighborhood. See? Oh, wait. There was one. Your, your next door neighbor was Italian. Oh. Yeah, oh, he was a nice guy. <laughs> uh, he really liked your folks. He was always helping your mom when your dad was at work. Hmm. 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 Oh. I don't remember him. It was before you were born. Oh, oh he was a big guy. <laughs> Stout, <laughs> like you. <laughs> Salt and pepper hair, <laughs> glasses, uh, space between his front teeth. Oh, yeah. Oh, gesundheit. Well, that's really interesting. I never knew I had an Italian neighbor who really liked my mom, you know, and, and he had the, the gray hair and glasses, a space. <laughs> Here are the ingredients. Okay, let's make our gyro. First off, the gyro meat. One pound ground lamb. One pound ground beef. One medium onion quartered. Five cloves of fresh garlic. Two teaspoons salt. One teaspoon dried oregano. One teaspoon cumin. And one half teaspoon of black pepper. Now for the low-carb pita bread. One and two-third cups of vital wheat gluten. One half cup and one tablespoon of golden flaxseed meal. One quarter cup lupin flour. Three tablespoons of powdered sweetener. One teaspoon of salt. One cup warm water. One teaspoon honey. Two teaspoons instant dry yeast. Two large eggs at room temperature three tablespoons of unsalted butter, melted, and five tablespoons of oat fiber, and finally, the fixins. You're going to need onion slices, tomato slices, lettuce, romaine, iceberg, or whatever your preference, tzatziki sauce, and feta cheese to crumble on top. That's optional. Okay. Well, first, we're actually going to start off with making the pita because it does take about 45 minutes to rest after we get it going. So during that 45 minutes, we'll make the meat mixture. Yeah, but we're gonna need this. Let's get to it. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the yeast going. This is a cup of water that's at least 110 degrees. Put them here. A teaspoon of honey. And this is not going to affect your blood sugar. This is purely to feed the yeast. And your two teaspoons of yeast go in next. And now we stir it up. Okay, we're gonna let this sit and start to activate for 10 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna get our dry ingredients ready. First, we have our vital wheat gluten, our lupin flour, the five tablespoons of oat fiber, the golden flax meal, salt, and my allulose monk fruit sweetener. Okay, now our dry ingredients are ready. In with the yeast, we put in our dry ingredients. And we start on medium, medium, medium speed. We have two room temperature eggs that are going in. Okay, we've added the butter. And now it's going for another 10 minutes or so. Good luck. Congratulations, Doe. You are off the hook officially. You're off the cuff. There's our dough. It's elastic. That's exactly how we want it. Okay, so here's our dough. Now, the directions tell me to cut this into 10 different 
or 10 pieces. I'm gonna do my best. Seven. Uh, uh, eight. And we have a little left over. So I did eight pieces. And what we're gonna do is roll this into a ball by taking up the sides. You pinch up the sides. Then you kind of make it into a ball like this. All right. Okay, there's one. Pinch these up here. What you do is you're taking it and you're pitching it into the bottom. Like that. It's actually very workable. And then you kind of roll it like that. There we go. Okay, now that we've rolled all five of these out, now we're gonna put them in the oven with a bowl of hot water so they can rise for 45 minutes. Okay, our meat mixture is actually fairly easy. Take our cloves of garlic, put it in the food processor, and we're going to process the heck out of it. Now the question is, could you use minced garlic? Of course you could. But there's something about fresh garlic that has, oh, I can smell it. I have a very bad sense of smell. Oh, I smell the garlic, I smell it. Okay. Once we've done that, we take our one medium onion and we pulverize the heck out of that too. Here we go. Yep, that's exactly what you want. You want it to be nice and gloppy and liquidy. Scrape it down. Now we're gonna put in some of our meat. I have the lamb and the beef. I'm gonna put the beef in and start to pulse that like this. Now it depends on the power of your food processor. Mine is, eh. So I, I'm doing this like, like in segments, to tell you the truth. Now I'm gonna take some lamb. I'm gonna put the lamb in here. And we're going to repeat that. Okay, yes, it's working well now. Now we got it. This is getting much closer to the consistency that we want. Okay, that should do it. Yep. That's it. That's how we make the meat. Now we're gonna put it into a pan. Plain and simple. Just put it in there. All right. Just a little more left off the blades. There we go. Into the preheated 325 degree oven. That's gonna be for 45 minutes to an hour or until the internal temperature is at least 160 degrees. Yeah, now they also recommend that you let it sit for at least two hours in the refrigerator before you slice it, preferably overnight. We're not gonna do that, no, you see. Uh, <laughs> I made one last night, so we're good to go. Oh yeah, and now we're good to go to Food Facts. Okay, before we actually get into the food history, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? And that elephant is, how do we pronounce this word? Yeah. Well, there's actually two pronunciations that are acceptable. The first one is Yiro, uh-huh, Yiro. The other one is Jiro, Jiro, yes. Now, I come from New York, and in New York we call it Gyro. <laughs> well, I mean, look at, yeah, we call it Gyro, but you know, that's wrong. I, I mean, you know how New Yorkers are. 
Oh boy, am I in luck. I was just washing my dog and I saw your truck. Um, I'll take a Coke and a gyro. Yeah. Oh, my hero? Yeah, that's Pete Alonzo. <laughs> yeah, now, I'll take a gyro. Yes, hero. Listen, buddy, if I want a hero, I'll go down to the deli on 3rd Avenue and get a hero. I want a gyro. It's pronounced hero. Oh, that's how it's pronounced. The New Yorker can't pronounce things? Hey, my elocution is perfect, all right? I won the war to PS35, so there. Give me two. Gyros. Now, most of us, including me, assume that gyros originated in Greece. That would probably be incorrect, because they're very close to doner kebabs from Turkey, and also shawarma, which is all over the Middle East. The Turkish doner kebab is a meat sandwich that's made with seasoned meat that's stacked vertically on a slowly rotating rotisserie, and it's in an inverse cone shape, if you can see. Now, the meat slices are actually cut off it as it's rotating, and the rest of the meat cooks. That's pretty cool. Shawarma is the Arab variation. It's also served on a vertical spit. Now, traditionally, it's made from lamb or mutton, but it also can be made from beef, chicken, and or veal. So, now when you watch the end credits of the Avengers, you know what Tony and the gang were so excited about eating. The word gyro comes from the Greek word gizero, which means turn, which makes absolute sense since all three of the sandwiches we've been talking about all involve meat that rotates on a vertical spit and is carved off as the rest of the meat cooks. To be more concise, the actual spinning rotisserie was invented in Burma in the Ottoman Empire in the 19th century. And what do they name it? The doner kebab, which is what they named their sandwich, the doner kebab. Well, that makes sense. The doner kebab was brought to Athens in 1922 by immigrants from Anatolia and the Middle East. Their preferred meat was pork, and it was served with a tzatziki sauce. Oh, so delicious. After World War II, the gyro traveled to Europe, the United States, and even Australia, making it truly one of the world's first global foods. The American gyro is made with shavings of lamb and beef, also mixed with garlic and onion, and served with a red sauce, tahini, or tzatziki sauce. Oh yeah, I'm making mine with tzatziki. It's going to be delicious. In the Middle East, they regard tahini sauce like Americans regard ketchup. It is delicious. It's made from sesame seed paste, lemon or lime juice, and salt. It is so good. You know what? I have a jar in the refrigerator. I'm gonna try some of it today too. The gyro, as we're talking about today, and also the one I'm making, is actually an American Greek food. And in this form, it exploded as a street food in Manhattan in the 1970s. Yep. The New York Times actually wrote about the food and its exploding popularity that it was as big as hot dog vendors. Well, if you come from New York, that's huge. In the 1970s, street gyros were huge in Athens, New York, and Chicago. Actually, John Garlic actually started mass producing meat cones made from beef and lamb for wide distribution, which made gyros now a national, if not worldwide, food. Meanwhile, in Halifax, Canada, <laughs> Peter Gavalukos was inventing the Donaire. That's the Canadian version of the gyro. Yeah, it was a pita stuffed with beautiful spiced lamb and smothered in tzatziki sauce. Oh man, if I wasn't hungry before, I sure is now. And now it's time for gyro trivia. September 1st is National Gyro Day. That sure takes a sting out of going back to school. The world's largest gyro was made by Sam Eld in Cyprus. It weighed 8,866 pounds. It took 70 grills to make it and over two tons of natural gas. Probably created some natural gas too. The best known variations of the gyro are the aforementioned Doner Kebab, that's from Turkey, the Shawarma from Arabia, the Doner from Canada, and the Al Pastor from Mexico. Michael Austin, CEO of Kronos Food, the world's largest manufacturer of gyros, claims that Americans eat almost 300,000 gyros a day. Wow, yeah, that's 110 million a year. Watch out, McDonald's. And finally, 
A gyro is not a sulvaki. A sulvaki is actually meat which is skewered on a wooden skewer and served on a flatbread or on a pita. A gyro is meat that's sliced off a spit, grilled, stuffed in a pita or on a pita. That's the difference. Live and learn. And that's Food Facts. Now we're going to take a little bit of oat fiber, or a lot of it. There's a lot of it there. And we're going to, we're going to, do, we're going to roll these out until they're about six inches or so. There we go, nice. This is how, this is how we roll the gyros. Oh, very nice, very nice. That's a little big. That's a little big, but I'll take it. Okay, then do the other one. This one I'll do a little smaller. <laughs> that's a gigantic, that's gonna be a gigantic pita. That's good. So I'll do four on this sheet and then I'll do two more. This is gonna be a lot here. And now we cover these for another 10 minutes. Okay, these have waited for 10 minutes each. I'm gonna put these now in the oven for eight minutes at 485 degrees. So I'm gonna keep an eye on them. Okay, hot oven. In eight minutes, we'll have pita. Okay, so the pitas are done. Uh, good news and bad news. Uh, the good news, they're done. They didn't burn. The bad news is they didn't rise. Yeah, they're not pockets, but they're flatbread. And there's nothing wrong with having a gyro on flatbread. So, we're going to make the best of it. Yeah, it's called off the cuff for a reason. Okay, so we're going to take our meat out of here. Now, there's a lot of juices in there. And instead of using olive oil or some kind of oil in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in here, turn it on, now I'm going to use this to lubricate the pan because this has all the flavor of the meat that we cooked. All, that's, all that good stuff. Our meat, let's get the end here. Here we go. I'm going to slice the meat up. This looks really, really good. Opa! Now this is already cooked, so you don't have to do it too long. Now I think it's easier to flip with this. There you go. Let's construct our sandwich. Let's put some of this delicious meat. That here. Some tomato. And some tzatziki sauce. Look at that. I made a gyro. Well, I did it. It took some doing and some fudging here and there, but I made a homemade low carb gyro. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that the that the pitas didn't expand into a pocket. Uh, I have to be honest with you, I did try that once and they worked but today it didn't but i'm very satisfied with it as a flatbread it looks terrific and i'm sure it's going to taste just as good and um actually uh the meat super easy to do um the the, the tzatziki i bought i was going to make it but i didn't have time so this is store-bought tzatziki, but that's also easy to make. Um, and the meat, like I said, is quick to do. It's delicious and you can make a lot of it. Uh, if you don't want to go through the trouble I went through trying to make the pita, you can make flatbread or you can go to the store and get a low carb pita. 
that's what I'm going to do next time. I have to be honest, it was a lot of work, but my reward is going to, is going to be tasting this right now. Here we go. Oh, this is so good. I'm going to take my first bite of my homemade low carb yido. Oh, the meat explodes with flavor. Really, excuse me. The meat is so good. I could eat it just plain on a bun. It's so good. The tzatziki has all the spice and it tastes great. And this bread, the low carb pita bread is absolutely fabulous. It's really, really, really good. It's some of the best low carb bread I've ever made. Mm. At this point, I don't care that it didn't turn into a pocket. It's just as delicious. Well, that's it for this time around. I'm here again in two more weeks with another recipe. Remember, until then, be well, eat good. Opa! On the next episode of a Off of the Cuff, I make a lasagna. A low carb lasagna made with ground turkey and eggplant. But then I get hit with a penalty flag. <whistles> Illegal procedure number 39, off the cuff, 10 car penalty, first down. In food facts, we go back to Roman times. Think the Romans. <laughs> They always had those trumpets. It's an Italian treat so good, you'll never know that it's actually good for you. This is a decadent low carb treat. That's on the next episode of Off the Cuff Healthy Cooking with Craig Mitchell. Alternate Sundays at 7.30 right here on Strong Island TV.